you, Max12 here. We're making Christmas cakes today. This is going to be a double recipe, so you're going to see two bowls. But the recipe I'm going to give you in the description box is for one, uh, one recipe's worth. First, you start off with three cups of flour. To that, you add two teaspoons of baking powder. Then you're going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon. Now, the reason I didn't put the double recipe in one bowl is I don't have a bowl big enough. So, those are my two biggest bowls because it does make quite a large quantity. Then you add a teaspoon of salt. One recipe will make four loaf pan, smaller loaf pans full of Christmas cake. So after the salt, you're going to add a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, one half teaspoon of ground allspice. I buy all my all my spices at the bulk barn and I put it back in the original containers because you pay three four dollars for a little container and the actual cost of spice is you know just certainly a few cents sometimes. Half a teaspoon of cloves then you're going to stir everything up nicely so that the spices are, are well incorporated and blended in with the flour. Now this, these Christmas cakes are actually fairly expensive to make when you buy everything because this candy fruits and that are expensive. So I'd never give my Christmas cake to anyone unless I know they're going to like them. Unless I know they like Christmas cake. Because I know that it's not a taste for everyone. This is um, Diced mix candied fruits and peels, and you need 16 ounces for each recipe, and but that's about two and a half till so two and a half cups of mi diced mixed candied fruits and peels. I love this stuff. I can eat this with a spoon. So sweet. And I add a little bit more, a little bit more of the uh, the the peels, because I like I really like the flavor of those. Then three cups of raisins. Doesn't matter what kind of raisins you use. I use the cheap ones, which are the Sultana raisins. Um, I suppose there may be a difference, as long as they're seedless. I suppose they're okay. Then we're gonna add one eight-ounce package of pitted whole dates, snipped. So about one and one-third cups. And uh, I just take a pair of scissors, a clean pair of scissors, and just snip the dates into small pieces. And there you go. Now you're off to that, you're going to add 8 ounces, or 1 and 1 third cups, of whole red or green candied cherries. So I put half and half. So I put about, you know, half a cup and a little of red and a half a cup and a little of green. You know what, it doesn't have to be exact. If you like lots and lots of cherries, then put more. Then after that, you're going to start putting in the nuts. So you want one cup of slivered almonds. Now these aren't slivered, these are sliced, because I only had sliced in the cupboard, and I wasn't going to go buy slivered. But really, honestly, there's really no difference. Then... One cup of pecan halves, pecan or pecan, whatever you, wherever, however you pronounce it. Then a half a cup of chopped candied pineapple. And that's it for the dry, pretty much the dry ingredients. So you can see it's quite full. Now you're going to mix up the wet ingredients. So that consists of three quarters of a cup of butter that you melt and cool slightly. Then you're going to add four eggs. My brother actually has chickens in his uh, in his yard in at his house, so I get some farm fresh eggs from him on a regular basis, which is very nice. Okay, then to that you're going to add one and three quarter cups of packed brown sugar. Uh, 
Now, if I could do it again, I'd pick bigger bowls because uh, it was really hard to mix. As you can see, they're getting quite full. So there's the three quarter cups. Okay, then there's grandma's molasses, and it's the dark molasses. The recipe calls for light molasses, but really, does it, you know, does it really matter? So this is a quarter cup of molasses. We have an expression in French here. It's, uh, we say, la comme la molasse en janvier, which is slow as molasses in January. And then you mix it up. And then I realize, hey, you know what? You forgot the orange juice. So you have to put a cup of orange juice in there too. And I didn't feel like making orange juice from concentrate, so I just used the Sunny D I had in the fridge. And uh, I used it last year, and you know, honestly, I didn't find a difference. In You can't really taste that difference in the recipe if it's not uh, orange juice from concentrate or kind of this fake orange juice. And then you blend it up, which would have been a lot easier if I would have had a bigger bowl. Okay, so there's your dry ingredients. And you want to blend that up very nicely so that it's evenly, the flour is evenly distributed. Then you add the wet ingredients. And then you're going to blend that up, which is going to be actually hard to do because it's quite heavy. But just keep doing it until all the flour is, is mixed. Then you spray or grease some loaf pans. And then fill them up three quarters of the way. This doesn't rise very much because it's mostly fruit and very little batter. So pretty much the way you fill them is the size of cake you're going to have at the end. And there are three for each recipe. So I ended up with eight and you're going to bake them for about an hour at 325 degrees. And there they are done. You, you check, see if they're done by sticking a toothpick in there. If Okay everyone, there's your finished Christmas cake. It's been baked and has cooled. Now what you want to do is you want to do the final step, which is really the most important step in this Christmas cake thing, is you want to wrap it in a cheesecloth soaked with either fruit juice or brandy. I use some cherry brandy. So you cut your cheesecloth in lengths. Well, it comes in three, three, uh, three square yards. So I cut, so I cut the one package into three piece, into three pieces, and one piece is about a yard. And then you put it in the bowl, and then you add the uh, the brandy until it's soaked. Until it soaks it up. And then and then you take your Christmas cake and you're going to wrap it. There we go. You're going to take a piece of aluminum foil. There you have one wrapped cake. Each you do this for each cake. Put it in the refrigerator, and in uh, about two weeks, you take them out, unwrap it, and all that cherry brandy that was, where this is dripping, just soaking wet with cherry brandy, will almost be dry, and all that brandy will have gone into the cake. And so you'll get a really nice reddish color to the cake. It's very nice. And then you re-soak the, the cloths and you wrap them again. Put them back in the fridge. So you want to let them sit in the fridge, if you can, at least three or four weeks because it really mellows out the flavor and they're really, really good.